Hello everybody, I'm Jonathan from Boredom Sated, and today I've got a little bit of a different video for you. We're going to talk about a specific spell, Tensor's Transformation. So some of you may know we are doing our list of spells that are, in our opinion, overpowered or underutilized, things like that. Um, it's hard to have overpowered spells necessarily, but they have very, very powerful uses. Tensor's Transformation is one of those that if you use it properly, it can be incredibly powerful. The reason why it is wizard only, because Tensor's Transformation is only available to wizards, is because unless you're playing essentially the uh, the blade singer you're you're not doing anything with this like you get an extra attack you do extra damage you have proficiency with all armor shields simple and martial weapons you have advantage on all attack rolls made with simple and martial weapons you get temporary hit points and you have proficiency in strength and constitution saving throws that's great and you get an extra attack if you don't already have the extra attack but if you're not set up to fight, it's like, all right, my D6 weapon that I just happened to carry is now going to do a D6 plus 2D12, and I'm going to attack twice. And my attack modifier is mediocre instead of terrible. I mean, you're not doing that much more. You could just be sitting back and casting spells. There's a very specific circumstance where in most wizards would find this useful. So what I wanted to do was figure out ways to make it so that this would be useful for an actual build, a build based around it. I've got two answers for it. One is the easy answer, which is my fun answer, which I'm going to go into first. And second is something new, because I wanted to show you something new. Now, let's start with the easy answer, which is what probably most of you would like to see. My other goal here was to get it as early as possible. So... My easy answer is going Bard and Paladin. Now, specifically, I would start with the levels of Paladin because I want to open with the ability to have uh, plate armor. And if you multi-class into Paladin, you don't get full, you don't get heavy armor, you only get medium armor. Also, if you open with Paladin, um, it makes it a little bit easier to go with the next steps. But if you do this appropriately, you can open with Paladin, go into Bard, and you have everything that you need. If you don't care and want to go with medium armor, that's fine. But this would also depend if you're rolling for stats or if you have the base stat build from um, the, the base game build, you know, the point build. So, why all of these things for this to work? Now, the two levels of Paladin make it so that you, since Paladin counts as half Spellcaster, two half levels of Spellcaster gets you to one full level, plus ten levels of Bard means that you can cast technically six level spells. You need ten levels of Bard to get Magical Secrets. Magical Secrets gives you the ability to take anyone else's spells. Uh, specifically, at tenth level, you have plundered magical knowledge from a wide spectrum of disciplines. Choose two spells from any class, including this one, a spell you choose must be of a level you can cast, as shown on the bard table or a cantrip. Now, you don't have six-level spells as a bard, but you do have access to six-level spells because of the fact that you are 10th-level bard, second-level paladin, which means that you can take Tensor's Transformation. As your second spell, if you really want to make this silly, you can take Find Greater Steed. So you need to do this for the 10th level, uh, 10 levels of bard. You need the two levels of paladin. The two levels of paladin gets you... Uh, a um, gets you a type of weapon uh, bonus, you know, the normal ones that we talk about. Uh, so you get a fighting style of your choice, which is nice. Uh, and of course, for the bard, you probably know that I, where I was going to go with this, which is you go College of Swords. College of Swords bard gets you two weapon fighting, and since we're trying to get as many attacks as possible with the Tensor's Transformation bonus, we want a two-weapon fight to be able to get that extra attack with your um, offhand weapon. So you do, do two-weapon two fighting. You take the improved two-weapon fighting feat, which makes it so you can use bigger weapons. You get the extra AC and all that kind of fun stuff um, as a feat. You go for strength, probably, because as a paladin, you have to have a minimum of a 13 strength. Again, if we're going point by and we want to wear plate armor, it just makes it easier to go with the strength as your stat for attacking. 
You still get your blade flourish, which means that on one of your attacks per round, you can deal extra damage uh, equal to your bardic inspiration die, as well as adding to your AC. You're wearing plate armor, so you've got a high AC. Um, if you do the find uh, greater steed, you can go with a griffin, which would be my suggestion, because griffin gets two attacks. And find greater steed specifically also states that uh, any spell that you cast on yourself goes on the Greater Steed as well. So the Greater Steed would get the Tensor's Transformation bonus as well. So five attacks, all with advantage, all doing 2d12 extra force damage. You don't need to worry about the armor and weapon proficiency because you already have it from Paladin. Um, you attack with both of your weapons. Uh, you attack with your... Uh, your Griffin's attacks, which are at plus six to hit, but advantage makes it so that it'll probably still hit pretty well. And you can get an enormous amount of work out of this with five attacks, each one adding 2d12 extra damage. And I think all of them are doing probably a d8 plus at least four. You can add another d10 at this point because you're a 10th level bard, so your uh, proficiency, for, so your uh, bardic inspiration die is a d10. And it's very, very effective. You have all sorts of role-playing things as well because bards are great for that. And um, role-playing-wise, you would also still have uh, um, all of your other bardic inspiration options. You would still have jack-of-all-trades, so your skills are still very high. And also, while this is going, because bard is dexterity charisma for its saving throws, you would get bar uh, dexterity, charisma, strength, and con while the spell is going. And if you opened instead with Paladin, gets a different set of a saving throws because Paladin is Wisdom Charisma. So you would be Strength, Con, Wisdom, Charisma as a Paladin, which is still really, really good. Um, overall, the four saving throws during combat, you can cast this as a sixth level spell, although you don't get a lot of sixth level spell slots. You still can use this, and it is a very, very, very powerful option throws you would get bar uh dexterity charisma strength being a seventh level paladin like lay on hands or i don't know divine smite so you can still smite with all of the attacks as well which means you can just hit for an, an enormous amount in a single round if you really feel like it so that's the real overpowered build because it's five attacks divine smite you get 2d12 extra force damage on all of these attacks. You're using spells that are considered overpowered. Find Greater Steed is generally considered an overpowered spell, even though it only gets you a CR2 creature. But it becomes intelligent, which is, again, very, very cool. So that's the overpowered build. And if anybody wants to see that, I will create, uh, or you should already see, a level 12 character build, 10 levels of Bard, 2 levels of Paladin, so that you can see how the build would work out. Also, uh, race-wise, uh, my racial choice for this, because you are going Strength Charisma, would be Dragonborn. Um, and Dragonborn also gets you the whole Breath Weapon option and a couple of really cool additional feats if you have the ability to take them and don't need the stats, if you look at the Dragonborn feats in Xanathar's. Now, the other build that I want to talk about is a new build, and it is a Warlock build a level 12 build that luckily enough is not Hexblade because Hexblade we all know is massively overpowered. So I'm going to talk about a new version and the new version is called the genie version. The genie uh, patron gives you a couple of really cool abilities. So first thing that the genie build does is say you get a certain additional spell list which does include the fact that you'll be able to cast Wish if you make it to ninth level spell slots, which is just cool. Um, now, personally, I would go with the Jin spell list because um, the Jin spell list also gets you greater invisibility as a fourth level spell slot option. Um, and greater invisibility is a fantastic spell, uh, and it gets you seeming as a fifth level spell option, which is, again, great for role playing. So, what does the genie do for you, and why am I talking about this with Tensor's Transformation? First of all, the, one of the cool abilities with the genie is called Genie's Wrath. Once per turn, when you hit with an attack roll, as long as it's an attack roll, it doesn't mean it has to be a melee attack or a spell attack, but it could be either one, you may deal extra damage to the target equal to your proficiency bonus. So that's always cool. 
the type of damage is determined by your patron. Um, again, for our purposes, if I chose the Jin, it would be thunder damage, which thunder is pretty, that's pretty solid. Um, uh, that's some, what you get at level, uh, at first level by tuning to choosing the genie, um, as your patron at sixth level, you get an elemental gift, um, as a bonus act. Well, first of all, you get, um, resistance to the damage type determined by your patron, which again would be thunder if you go Jin. Uh, it's bludgeoning if you go Dao, fire if you go Afriti, or cold if you go with Amarid. Uh, in addition, as a bonus action, you can give yourself a flying speed of 30 for 10 minutes. You can hover during this, and you can use this bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency mod. So again, very cool, giving yourself a flying speed. Um, at 10th level, you get something called Sanctuary Vessel. It's kind of neat. You can have a bunch of people go into your genie's vessel with you, um, basically to hide there for a little while. Or uh, the other thing that it does is if you spend 10 minutes in there, it counts as finishing a short rest. So you can do 10 minutes there uh, instead of an hour outside. And anyone who does this can also add your proficiency bonus to their number of hit points gained if they spent any hit dice as part of the short rest. Now we get to the part that I actually wanted to use this for, which is, as a Jin, you are a genie, which means you get a wish. It's a limited wish, though, and it's literally ability called Limited Wish. At 14th level, your patron gets you a small wish. As an action, you can speak your desire to your genie's vessel, requesting the effect of one spell that is 6th level or lower and has a casting time of one action. Well, Tensor's Transformation is 6th level and has a casting time of one action. Which means that you can cast Tensor's Transformation on yourself. There's a lot of work involved to do it, and the big downside I haven't even gotten to yet, which is that once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you've finished 1d4 long rests. So it's not going to happen often. But when it does, real cool stuff happens, because you are obviously going with a Pact of the Blade Warlock here. Pact of the Blade gets you a bunch of stuff including the ability if you want to to go greater uh to go with the the a greater weapon you can go with a, a big two-hander go with the great weapon specialization do with crap loads of damage you have improved packed weapon to make it so you get the you can use your packed weapon as your spell uh, focus um for the purposes of keeping the spell up you can also choose to have eldritch mind which gives you advantage on constitution saving throws to maintain concentration and since you have uh, Constitution as one of your um, saving throws if you go into the spell, it makes it so it's much easier to keep maintain your concentration. Um, Eldritch Smite is still an option because of your Pact feature. Now, also remember, this is a spell of 6th level or less. It's not one of your spell slots. So it means your Eldritch Smite can still do lots and lots of work. Um, you have all of the other normal... Pact of the Blade features that you can go into, including getting the extra attack or adding your Charisma modifier to damage as necrotic damage. You can also just go into other ability portions of it, depending again on whether you are rolling for stats or not, depending on how high your strength and Charisma can be. The problem, of course, with this build is that you're not a Hexblade, so you can't use your Charisma to attack. Um, but you do get a lot of the other abilities from it, and you do get a lot of really cool things in the Warlock Genie build, which we've already talked about, including the extra spells. And you do make up for some of the damage by getting your proficiency bonus once per round. Um, again, with this build, because I would probably go Strength uh, Charisma for the purposes of, again using strength as my attack modifier, especially if I'm going to go great, greater weapon specialization. Um, I would go with the uh, the Dragonborn, because Dragonborn is, is uh, plus two strength, one plus one charisma. Um, and again, it gets you that kind of opportunity to play around with the role-playing aspect of playing a Dragonborn, depending on what your, um, what your game master kind of wants to do. There's a, lots of other things you can do with your invocations, but I have mentioned most of the blade ones that are important. Um, you still can do all of your other spellcasting options, but the idea here is that you're going Pact of the Blade and not going Hexblade, and it still works, even though it might not be as overpowered. 
but the amount of damage you will do when you are using great weapon specialization and have automatic advantage and adding 2d12 on each of your attacks is a fantastic amount of damage for your warlock so you can do it starting at level 14 it's not as strong as starting at level 12 but since you're only in one character class you also get three stat boosts instead of only two making it easier for you to be able to play a fully well-rounded character so let me know if you have any specific questions or issues about this let me know if there's something you would add to it because there's definitely a possibility of adding more fun stuff to this to make it even that much more powerful of a build it is strong it's not anywhere near as strong as the bard ability would be and i didn't want to do the obvious of going into the uh the blade singer so sue me if you wanted to go that way you can still do it if you want to and it is a very obvious and very strong choice if you have any other comments, let us know. Uh, like, subscribe, all that jazz. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, like it, not, whatever. Have a good time and I'll see you next time.